Costa del Sol has to be seen to be believed. It's the centre of a nationwide building boom. Three million houses started or built in Spain in the last four years, and more than half of them on the coast. By some estimates, 40% of all construction in Europe is happening in Spain. Even the Spanish are starting to feel the squeeze. Bueno, pues eh, lo que ha ocurrido ha sido una auténtica desgracia para lo que era la ciudad. Era un sitio, un paraíso que se podía haber desarrollado estupendamente si las personas que vinieron hubieran tenido realmente voluntad. Mercedes Vázquez came to Marbella more than 20 years ago to live in the countryside. Her once uninterrupted view to the sea now contains a huge apartment block, illegally built. She's leading a fight back by locals. A partir de ahí, un grupo de personas que vivimos cerca mmm, nos empezamos a movilizar y luego vimos que el problema que teníamos nosotros no era un problema único. Eh, tenemos el edificio que está detrás de nosotros, que tenían que haberse construido eh, siete mmm, chales unifamiliares y se han construido 81 apartamentos. <risa> In Marbella now, there are more than 30,000 apartments originally approved by council and later judged illegal. It's a complete mess. There are the apartment blocks on either side of the motorway. Illegal because they're too close to the road. There's the Senator Hotel. The police were called in to stop work after a court order was ignored. Mercedes Bathgath says it should be demolished. It's very, very important because if no one is demolished, a lot of uh, people can think, well, there is no problem. You make illegalities and after a time you will have it legal. <laughs> And in Marbella, none is more infamous than the seductively named Banana Beach. In the language beloved of real estate agents the world over, Banana Beach is absolute beachfront. In fact, a bit too absolute. It's on public land and a court has ordered its demolition. Si esto llega a derribarse, esto es lo propio de una república bananera donde no hay leyes y donde yo me salto la ley cada vez que me dé la gana. Francisco Bugalal and his wife Chani retired here from Madrid. The demolition order came five years after they bought the apartment. Francisco argues he bought in good faith and has title deeds and a mortgage that should protect him from the threat of demolition. Que cuando se un, una entidad eh, bancaria te hace un, una hipoteca es porque anteriormente se ha informado en el registro de que esa vivienda está legalizada. So what will happen if the court orders followed and the wreckers move in? Pues la verdad es que no no lo imagino. Yo a mí me tendrían que sacar pues, pues con con máquinas con grúas o con una dotación de, de la policía o de la Guardia Civil. Porque yo me encierro aquí en mi casa y... The attractive old centre of Marbella seems quite at odds with the image of rapacious and corrupt development which has catapulted the place into the headlines. Its other reputation is as one of the smarter, more upmarket tourist destinations on the Costa del Sol. Marbella's problems really go back 15 years when the town elected a new mayor, now dead, 
who promised to clean up the place and attract new investment. The money poured into property, but not, it seems, into the town hall treasury. The city's bankrupt and a clutch of former councillors and officials facing charges of bribery and corruption. The council's been dissolved, and Diego Martin, who's a criminal lawyer by training, is administrator until new elections are held. So how much money is missing? To quantify exactly that is very difficult. No? But we talk about patrimonio that have grown up to 2,400 million euros. Y eso solo de lo que se ha podido descubrir, con lo cual es de sospechar que, que sean algunos miles de millones de euros más que debieran haber estado en el ayuntamiento y que no están. Among those accused of accepting illegal payments is a former deputy mayor, Isabel García Marcos. Did you ever take bribes or money that wasn't yours um, while you were a councillor in Marbella? Jamás, jamás. Podrá nadie probar que ya yo haya percibido ninguna cantidad que sea ilegal, bien sea por su procedencia, bien sea por su motivo, ni por ningún motivo. Sencillamente no porque no lo puedan probar. Police say that they found 350,000 euros in your house. Can you explain where that money came from? No es una cantidad que me pertenezca a mí, nada más que en una pequeñísima parte. En realidad lo que se localizaron fueron 300 y pico mil euros. Y a mí me pertenece una pequeñísima parte, eh, más de 300 mil euros son de mi hija, son propiedad de mi hija y proceden de que eh, sus abuelos... The courts might eventually decide the truth of the matter, but part of the problem is the time it's taken for the courts to get this far and declare tens of thousands of apartments illegal, let alone chase down the missing billions. Since the Marbella scandal broke, dozens of other examples have come to light across the country. And according to Diego Martin, the problem is that local councils rely too heavily on fees from development to fund their services. The problem is effectively the financing of the ayuntamientos. Los ayuntamientos están mal financiados, es un problema que no está resuelto en la legislación española, no está resuelto satisfactoriamente. Y por tanto muchísimos ayuntamientos acuden a, la, a los convenios urbanísticos para obtener el dinero que necesitan. Hay sin embargo quien aprovecha esa oportunidad para eh, obtener beneficios propios, que es lo que ha ocurrido en, en este caso. Jose Prado Cecenia is president of the Regional Developers Association. He agrees. Mientras no cambie la ley de financiación de las haciendas locales, o sea, la ley por la cual los ayuntamientos se nutren del dinero para sus gastos, mientras no cambie esa ley, no podremos cambiar el sistema que existe. And the scale of development on the coast has also changed. In the 60s and 70s, it was a week or two in the sun and a cheap hotel. Now millions of Northern Europeans are retiring here with their golf clubs. Even those on short breaks want their own apartment. You can almost see the development spreading day by day back up the valleys from the coast, such as the pace of this building boom and it shows absolutely no sign of stopping any time soon. And just as important as new land for development is water to go with it. Mind you, finding an umbrella seems the more pressing issue the day we're in Cuevas del Becerro, an hour and a half's drive inland from the coast. The 1800 souls, though, of this quiet village worry deeply about water. The banner on the town hall puts it plainly. When the spring runs dry, it's too late. This is the spring in question. It's fed from an aquifer in the next valley up, where the neighbouring council has just approved a huge golf course, hotel and apartment project. 
Juan Antonio Garcia organizes the opposition. La finca donde va situado el proyecto tiene unas 800 hectáreas. Eh, las noticias que tenemos y lo que ha salido en prensa y lo que hemos visto en informes es que van 800 chalets de lujo, eh, van los dos campos de agua que te comentaba antes, van dos hoteles, va un geriátrico, una gran superficie comercial, un hipódromo, en fin, un macro complejo gigantesco. The site's all laid out, ready to go. Accommodation for 15,000 people. A decent sized town to be built from the ground up. Hay peligro, y según los informes de la cuenca mediterránea, que no pueda afectar en calidad de cantidad. O sea, nos podemos quedar con mucha menos agua con ninguna. Y además se puede contaminar el acuífero con las pesticidas y los fungicidas que utilizan en los campos de gol y también con las aguas sucias que, que correrán por toda la finca. In protest, the entire town went on strike for a day. Shut up shop. They got national and international media coverage. Juan Antonio Garcia has followed the Marbella saga and knows that once the bricks are laid, it might be too late. Entonces, lo que estamos viendo es que puede ocurrir lo que ha ocurrido en Marbella. Que dentro de 10, 15, 20 años digan esto es ilegal, esto es ilegal, no se tenía que haber hecho, pero ya el daño está hecho. You can understand his fear because in Marbella there's a sense that arguments about compensation might delay or prevent the demolition of any illegal buildings. As we chatted to Francisco Bugalal at Banana Beach and speculated on the likelihood of the wreckers ball ever being deployed, the doorbell rang. It was a lawyer, Jose Cosin gathering support from apartment owners to challenge the demolition order. So did the lawyer think the demolition order would ever be acted upon? It is a political problem. And when you're talking about politics, you never know. Okay? It's, it's you never know. Plenty of the money going into Spanish property is legitimate, but no one doubts that it's also the perfect environment for organised crime to launder money. Jose Antonio Martin Payin has just retired as a judge of Spain's Supreme Court. Eh, ahora, en, en, y que vemos en los periódicos Malaya 1, 2 y 3, Ballena Blanca, no son eh, delitos urbanísticos, es el blanqueo de dinero de mafias, concretamente de mafia rusa. He says as well as changing the way councils are funded, there need to be tougher penalties for related crimes. Eh, en esos casos hay que modificar el código penal, subir las penas, eh, no es proporcional que un robo de un televisor en un chalet eh, habitado cuando no están los habitantes sean cinco años de prisión y estos delitos lleven dos tres años de prisión. What began as a local scandal in Marbella has become a national issue, as Diego Martín concedes. Pero efectivamente el asunto del caso de Marbella y otros que se han producido también en España, en el Levante español e incluso en la zona centro de España, los alrededores de Madrid, pues ha forzado efectivamente un debate e incluso modificaciones legislativas. ¿no? Y someter además al urbanismo a unos controles externos a los propios municipios. Even Jose Prado Cecenia, the developer, wants national planning laws. Venimos pidiendo un, lo que llamamos un pacto de Estado. Un pacto de Estado que se haga entre los grandes grupos políticos nacionales. Un pacto de Estado para hacer una ley del suelo estatal. Estatal. Que sea el Estado el que dirija el urbanismo. En Cuevas del Bacero, Juan Antonio García quiere eso también, para que la ciudad de agua es segura. 
there are signs the government might be listening. El mismo presidente de gobierno ha estado hablando estos días de que si al final las comunidades autónomas autónomas no cumplen con su cometido de ordenar correctamente el territorio, va a intervenir el Estado. For decades, the Spanish coastline's been developed with little thought beyond the jobs it's provided. Perhaps, and only perhaps, those days are coming to an end. Thank you.